love you all. Welcome all you lovers to the Florida Love Show. This is your love hour right before happy hour, sponsored by Florida Love. Join us each week as we spread love in the Florida community and transform the world with love. Now, back to spreading love. This is for you, Kenny. It's the Florida Love Show. Paying the forward is the theme. It's the Florida Love Show. Hosted by Kenny and his dream. Every special guest brings their love to the set. And the interview flies, it all comes alive like a duet. He has a very special side In the Brooklyn Cafe It's a big love buffet With roses galore And you are adored Come take a bouquet Love you, Shar. Love you so much, Sharon. So Sharon created the Florida Love theme show song. We've done a, uh, probably over 90 shows in a row together, and Shaz the best. So Shaz going to be singing later on, and I am so excited for today. I am so excited. Welcome, all you lovers, to the Florida Love Show. I'm Kenny Love, founder and creator of Florida Love. We spread love all over the world, and... Um, also, we're a nonprofit, so we're a 501c3, and we just love everyone. We love all human beings, and I say I love you to everybody. So, actually, I'm just going to share something. So today, I got up, I put on my red suit, and my pants split, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, my mission in this world is to spread love. I mean, so I just said, I'm going to go out and spread love and give out roses. And I did. 
I went to Publix, I got my roses. Actually, somebody noticed, didn't make a difference. Spreading love, it's not about me. It's not about me, it's not about my pants splitting or any of that. It's about spreading love. So Florida Love, we're about spreading love. And I could pass right now on this show. Life is short, so every second, now, 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 every moment, now, 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 I spread love. I say I love you to everybody. So I want to say I love you to everybody in the studio right now. So I love you, Danny. Danny's my photographer over here. He's amazing. He's taking tons of incredible photos. I love you, Sha. Love you so much. And love you, Jacqueline. Love you so much. Jacqueline looks so beautiful. She's all in red. So Jacqueline is our featured guest today. We're going to be loving her dad, John Burke, and we're going to be loving her husband, Bruce Trumbor, and we are going to be loving her whole family, and just, again, I believe I love one person, I love all human beings. So who could you love today? Who could you say I love you today? I love you, Slick, by the way. Slick just came in, my music maestro. Love you, love you, love you. So who could you love today? So after the passing of George Floyd, I gave out thousands of roses to every African-American, and I said, I love you. And the news covered it. So I'm going to show you the first news, and we call that Roses for Change Love Marches. So here's the first news about Roses for Change. Welcome back. Now at 530, who couldn't use a little love right now? <laughs> One Pompano Beach businessman is making it his mission to spread love all around by giving out the flower of love to random strangers. CBS 4's Lisa Petrillo has this heartwarming story. There's an old song with lyrics that say what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Ken Learman is living that moment in a movement he created called Roses for Change. We love you. The idea for Roses for Change came about after the death of George Floyd and the turmoil that followed. I felt their pain. And for me, I don't see color. I mean, I see us all as human beings and we all can love each other. I mean, love is simple. Ken, who owns his own printing business for 35 years, appropriately named The Happy Printer, decided to spring into action, purchasing dozens of roses he could hand out. The first thing I did was I went to Whole Foods and I also went to Publix and I gave out roses to all the African Americans in the store. And I said, I love you. And they said, they said, I love you back. And they said, God bless you. And they said, we need love more now than ever before. Ken was so moved by the response, he posted pictures on Facebook, receiving 600 likes. Suddenly, Roses for Change on Facebook was born. His followers wanted to join him, buying roses too, and it's now become a movement, spreading love to people of all races. We recently caught up with them in Boca Raton. I just want to say I love you. Have a wonderful day. Michelle Bellman, who had never met Ken in person, wanted in on the love train and came out on this day to volunteer. His message is just of love and love yourself and love one another and he speaks to my soul and he speaks to me because I love to spread love as well. Some were skeptical wondering if there's a catch to these random acts of kindness but for those who understood it it meant the world. I think it's just amazing. This is really really nice. You're really showing your love. You're taking your time to do this. Just amazing and the red flowers forget it. Just bringing brightness to this world. It's much needed. Thank you so much. Seriously, so sweet. Can you imagine what a world it would be like if we just all gave roses to each other instead of what's actually going on? Like, to me, that's a way to spread a message. Spread the message of love. Lucky me, I received my rose. For more information on roses for change when they meet every Friday, go on to our website. Mm -hmm. Love you, Lisa Petrillo. Love you, love you, love you. So that's the first news about roses for change. So actually, I was in Publix today giving out my roses, getting my roses, saying I love you. And uh, I actually, I ran into a police officer who I see almost every week when I'm there. And I said, what's your name? He said, Jerry. And last week I had given him a rose for his wife. And he said to me that the rose had wilted during the day, but when he put it into water, it all of a sudden bloomed. And he gave it to his wife and she was so happy. And so I gave him another rose today. And he said, I love you. I said, I love you. You know, and I was thinking actually today about police reform. You know, we have these, this bill about police reform. So I'm, my political party's love. My religion is love. God is love. Everything about me is just love. All I see is love. And, you know, I was thinking, you know, maybe we should just love police officers, give them all roses, and let them give out roses when they're on duty, which we've actually done. We had a roses for change for police officers. And let's just love them. And let's spread the love to them, and they'll spread the love, and so on and so on. 
Like, let's all love each other. And, you know, again, we only have now. I mean, I'm in the moment. I only have now. I could pass right now. So I don't think about what happened. I look towards the future. And we can all love each other. It's possible. I've seen it, giving out roses. And I actually had one woman say to me, she was 90 years old, she hadn't heard I love you in 80 years. So, so many people don't hear I love you, and they feel so loved when we give out roses and we say I love you, or if we even say I love you, just to let them know that they're loved and lovable. So I just, I want to say I love you, Leanne Love. I saw Leanne Love put that beautiful emoji with the heart. I love Leanne Love so much. So Leanne Love has been spreading love all over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, so Florida Love, YouTube, Florida Love is all over social media, spreading love all over the world. And Leanne Love is, is as far as, she's a, she's a miracle maker. She just spreads love. Who she is is pure love. So I love you, Leanne Love. I love you, love you, love you. So please keep the comments coming. Please keep them coming so we can all love each other. So the next news I'm going to, ah, oh, Freddie Love. Oh my God, Tess LaBella. Oh my God, I love you, love you, love you. So if, Tess and Freddie, actually, Tess is going to be on the show next week. Tess and Freddie, I love you, love you, love you. Tess is going to be on the show next week as our featured guest. And Freddie, her husband, will be with her. And, oh, love you. Hello from New Hampshire. Love you, Sharon. Oh, my God. Deborah, love you, love you, love you, Sharon. Love you, Trutron. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Oh, my God. Sharon. Deborah Kozik. Sharon. Deborah Kozik, love you, Leanne. Oh, my God, Mom. Oh, my God, Mom, I love you. I love you. I love you. This is incredible. This is the best. This is love the best. This is the best. So, so Leanne Love met, I mean, you know, she's, she's posting all over Instagram. So she met Tess LaBella on Instagram, and now she's going to be the guest on the show next week. This is how God spreads love. And... Tess is amazing. She writes these incredible children's books. And we're just going to talk about love. And we're going to actually have her friend on the show. And her daughter's going to sing on the show. I mean, this is how love spreads. We can all love each other. It's so simple. Let's just say I love you to each other and love each other. We only have now. Life is short. I could pass right now. So I love you all. Please keep the comments coming. And mom, oh my God, mom, I love you so much. My mom's the love of my life. Love you, mom. Love you, love you. So beautiful, my mom. So beautiful. So the next news I'm going to show you, I give out roses to teenagers and say I love you. And these teenagers, oh, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, Tess. Oh, love you, Freddie. Love you. Oh, my God. Hello from the Love Makers Foundation. Love you, Deborah. Love the Love Makers Foundation. So I'm excited for the Love Makers Foundation to come on also. Love you, love you, love you. The love Makers Foundation is amazing. They're spreading love all over the world also. They're incredible. So it's possible. Let's all love each other. I love you all. Oh, my God. I am like, I am high on love. I love you, love you, love you. That's what love does. Best feeling in the whole world. So on the second news, I'm handing it out to teenagers. And when I get there, they're just hanging around like teenagers do. And by the end, we're dancing. That's what love does. It transforms the world. We're dancing. And they're dancing. All of us are dancing. And the thing is, they haven't heard I love you in years from parents, siblings, friends, etc. So that's where the miracles occur. That's where God spreads love and the miracles occur. So I'm going to show you the second news where I hand out roses to teenagers. We're continuing to bring you inspiring stories from our area about people changing their communities for the better. Tonight, WPTV News Channel 5's Chris Gilmore shares the story of a man on a mission to spread love one rose at a time. Mm. Roses are red and Ken Lerman's suit is too. Love you, Anthony. If you see his bouquets, he has a message for you. Man, love you, brother. The 55-year-old loves love. I love you. And he now uses roses to let people know it. Oh, I love you. There's some pain behind Lerman's purpose. His Roses for Change campaign began this summer after he and people across the country witnessed the fallout following the death of George Floyd while in police custody. How can one human being do that to another human being. Like, I, w I was crying. 
when I saw it. Armed with roses and a message of love, Lerman says he wanted to reach those most affected. I got to give this to all the African Americans. They're hurting. His message has since caught on both online and in Palm Beach County, where he regularly shares love and roses to people of all colors. We caught up with Lerman with a hundred of his favorite flowers in hand at the Milagro Center in Delray Beach. A lot of learning goes on every day here in the Milagro Center, but today's lesson consisted of some flowers and three words going a long way. I love you. I was surprised and I was like, oh, I love you too. A lot of these teens say it's been a while since they've heard those words directed at them and even longer since they've been given flowers. I was, it was kind of weird at first. I was like, Rose is giving someone a photo. Was, it was kind of weird because I didn't expect that, but it's pretty nice. It's a really nice gesture. He said, I love you, you stay safe, and he told my grandma a happy birthday too. Lerman says he hopes the connection he makes with strangers leaves a lasting impact. That's my mission every single day to spread love in the Florida community and transform the world with love. Because maybe all you need is love. In Delray Beach, Chris Gilmore, WPTV News Center. <laughs> love you, Chris Gilmore. Yes, yeah, so maybe all you need is love. Actually, I'll say all you need is love. I mean, so saying I love you to each other. I want to say I love you to Julie Edwards, Julie Love. I just saw her. Love Crackers Foundation. That was, she's amazing. Love you, Julie. And, you know, just please keep the comments coming. Let's just keep loving each other. Oh, love makers, love you, Sharon. I love, I love you. Oh, Deborah, love you, Deborah. Love you so much. Oh my God, love you, Mom. Oh my God, love you, Mom. Love you, love you, X's and O's. Love you, Leanne. Love you, Leanne. See, this is the best. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Please keep the comments coming. This is the best. So my friend Linda Love and I, we went to Outback Steakhouse after one of the shows, and I had all my roses, and we had a love fest in Outback. Gave out roses to everybody, said I love you. A big Roses for Change love march. We end up walking outside, and this guy says to us, would you mind giving my girlfriend a rose? We're like, no, 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 we love you, love you, love you, absolutely. So we give his girlfriend a rose, and he ends up filming it. And he ends up posting it on TikTok. I had no idea. I, and... Now it's over 2 million views on TikTok. It's a 10 second video of showing us giving out roses and saying I love you. That's how fast love spreads. God is love. So when I spread love to one person, I say I love you to one person, it goes to all, I say 8 billion, 9 billion, 10 billion, whatever, all human beings. And I don't see color like white, black, red, yellow. I don't label. Love is no judgment. So all I see is human beings. We're all human beings and we're all the same. We all have blood, we're all the same. We are all the same. So let's have no judgment and just love each other. Love each other, love each other. So I want to play the TikTok video. So you see this love viral video. Um, so please play the TikTok video. Can I have a rose for my girlfriend? Yes. Yes, I can. We would love to. Oh, wow. We want to say we... Yeah, we would love to. We'd love to give you a rose. So that went love viral. God spread love over 2 million views. And more and more views, that's what happens with love. It just spreads. I call it loving it forward, spreading like love fire. So, oh, I love you too. Love you, love you, love you, Julie. Love you, love you, love you. Love you, Sharon. Oh, in Florida. So we're in Boca Raton right now. And we're, on, we're all over South Florida, but we're everywhere. I have people calling me from all over the world that they want to give out roses and have Roses for Change love marches. So it's a worldwide love movement. And so, please, feel free to call me, 917-699-1995. Feel free to call me, and let's spread love all over the world. Um, Roses for Change love marches. So, I always say that love is the absence of judgment. Love is the absence of criticism, hatred, anger, resentment, violence, killing. Love is saying, I love you. It's forgiving and saying, I love you. To me, all that other stuff is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. I'm not interested in that. Also, love is no gossip. Gossip kills people. No gossip. I don't listen to gossip. Love is saying, I love you. That simple. So every week I play on the show something around don't take people for granted, to not judge. So this is a video about not judging people for how they look. So please play that video. 
Honey, I have to give Amy the day off because she's got some family obligation. So I'm gonna go run to the grocery store and get some things for the dinner party tonight. Jake, can you pull the car around? I'm ready to go. Thanks. Did you have a specific destination in mind? Hmm? Um, yeah, let's go to the grocery store on Orange. Did you want me to stop and get you a water of some kind, Mrs. Monroe? Anna, hi. Um, are you able to come tonight? Oh, great, awesome. Um, no, don't even worry about it. I'm actually going to be taking care of all the details right now. Um, great. Uh, Jake, can you just drop me off at the corner? I'll just be a minute. Yeah, no, okay, I'll see you tonight. Okay, bye. you money if you need money. What? I'm not robbing you, lady. I think you dropped your credit card back in the grocery store. Oh. Thank you. Nah, not that it matters, but I'm only a mess like this because I'm helping my mom fix up her home. Listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I it's easy to judge someone based on how they look, isn't it? Don't judge someone based on what they wear, drive, or where they live. This works both ways. Don't judge someone as rich or poor, good or bad, based on their externals. Someone could be driving a nice car that is rented, a nice home that is borrowed, and a nice watch that is stolen. Or they could truly own all of those things and be a wonderful person. What they own doesn't define who they are, and who they are doesn't define what they own. And don't judge someone with dirty clothes, messy hair, as poor or downtrodden. They could be a millionaire. It doesn't matter how someone looks or dresses. What matters is who they are and their values. Don't treat people based on their bank balance or their net worth or their fame or status. Treat people as humans, as people. When we judge others for what they don't have, we're devaluing ourselves. People have so much more to offer than their clothes, cars, and watches. But when we prioritize someone based on these things, it shows our values more than it shows theirs. If you want even more videos, just... Yeah, so let's all love each other. That's what's important. Love is important, and love is free. So when I love people, I expect nothing in return. Love is free. And everything at Florida Love is free. To post on all our pages is free. So we have different pages at Florida Love on Facebook, different groups. So one of the groups we have is Roses for Change, where we give out roses and say, I love you. We also have Love Circle, where we get together in person and we say, I love you. We have Days of Love through Love Circle and Roses for Change. I've had Days of Love at churches, temples, recovery centers. I had it for um, women who were foster, um, th you know, they were foster moms, all different places, teachers, hospitals, during COVID, anywhere, outside, doesn't make a difference. Just giving out a rose and saying I love you. It could just be one person. That spreads to all human beings. So that's Roses for Change in Love Circle. Then we have Florida Love Dating and Networking. 
So this is exploding. Everybody wants to find the man and woman in their dreams. I have hundreds of people who want to be a part of the group every day now. It actually doubled in the past, like, week. It's now 4,000. I mean, so to me, it's going to be a million. And we don't judge anybody who wants to be in the group. The only requirement to be in a Florida love group is to be loving. That's it. Just be loving. How simple is that? So please join Love Circle, Roses for Change, Florida Love Dating and Networking. If you want to meet the man or woman of your dreams or you just want to spread love, please join. We also have Love Will Keep Us Together with almost 4,000 people. Love you, Sharon. Love you so much, Sharon. Oh, my God. Love you so much, Mom. Oh, my God. Love you so much, Mom. Oh, they're splitting their pants. That's right, Leanne. That's right. Hey, just keep spreading love. Just keep loving it forward. Even with a split in the pants, just keep loving it forward. Loving it forward. So we also have Love Will Keep Us Together where we just say I love you to each other and we post about love and we send hugs and kisses. and So everybody feels loved in this group. I mean, again, Love Will Keep Us Together. And that's one of my favorite songs, you know, from from Captain and Tennille when I was growing up. So to me, love will keep us together. And so join, love will keep us together. And then we have a group called Love Songs. So Love Songs started out with one person a few months ago. I just kept loving the one person. Then the more people, the more people. Today, it hit 72,000 people in just a few months. Thousands are joining every day from all over the world. So everybody in the world wants to love and be loved. Everybody. It doesn't matter the language. Everybody wants to love and be loved. So that's what Love Songs is all about. Please join Love Songs. And so every week on the show, I play a song from Love Songs. This happens to be a song from Italy, from Love Songs. And I got to tell you, when I saw it, we live in a really beautiful world. And Italy is really beautiful. So please play that song from Love Songs. Raise me up to more than I can. 
Wow, beautiful. So that's Bernadetta from Love Songs and in Italy. I mean, how gorgeous is that? We live in a beautiful world full of love. So let's all love each other. Like everybody was commenting, let's all love each other and spread the love. Yes, Leanne, everybody was commenting during the song. Let's all spread the love. Michelle, love you, love you, love you, beautiful. Yeah, love raises us up together. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. I had chills running down my spine watching that just now. That's how powerful love is. So love you all so much. So I'm going to introduce you to my featured guest with Sha together. So welcome, 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 Jacqueline and Sha. So I love you, love you, love you. Love you, Jacqueline. So Jacqueline is a world famous mental health attorney and also special needs attorney. And she, we are loving, actually, we're loving her dad, John, and her husband, Bruce, today. So I'm dedicating this show to John and Bruce. So please, Jacqueline, tell, tell everybody what happened with your dad and your husband. Uh, I had my dad, uh, and I was up celebrating my birthday, my 40th birthday, in Pennsylvania. And five days later, uh, my dad passed away of a heart attack. And I returned to Florida. I was with my young son. He was four years old. His name is Jordan. He's now 24, and he's attending college. But when I came back to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and, and living with my husband, Bruce, uh, about three months later, my husband was killed in a boating accident. And it happened on a Saturday night. Uh, I think the police told me it was around 9, uh, 1130. And uh, I was visited by the police. I was visited also by Channel 7 News, which turned into a nightmare. And uh, I just had to get into protective mother mode and also uh, protect him, wait until I had my support system here of my mom, our priest from St. Anthony's, and also uh, I also employed the services of a, a psychologist. Because the worst thing, of course, that a parent has to tell them, their child, is that their father or their mother passed away. So uh, that's kind of part of my story. And I've, since it's been 19 years uh, since his passing, uh, my dad's passing will be five days after my uh, birthday, which is in December. And then uh, in uh, March, we will uh, remember my husband, Bruce. It'll be 20 years since his passing. And even though it's 20 years and 19 years for my dad, they're always a part of my heart. They're a part of my son's heart and my family. And uh, part of the grieving process, and it goes on and on and on. And you have to also remember them. You have to protect their memory, especially in the loved ones. And, I made sure that I protected the memories of both of these people that were very, very integral in my life. And I also protected it with my son. And he knows his father. He knows his grandfather. Uh, he worships his father, particularly because if you know our family, we really do love uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, we just recently uh, went up to a Jaguars game. We both wore Steelers, but then I had my son go and get a Jaguars uh, outfit because he's up in Jacksonville. But uh, it's just grieving and remembrance and, and love of a, of a person that you've lost is an ongoing process. And part of it is you are weak and then you're strong. Then you're weak and strong. But you always have to keep moving ahead and you have to be positive. And uh, you just really have to love them and you have to also love yourself 
as well, and you have to just keep the memory alive. It's it's difficult. It's it's uh, it's a big process. Uh, as a mental health special needs elder law and addiction attorney, I always tell people that if need be to make sure that they do turn to professional people if uh, if they are sensing the loss or if it's interfering with the life process. And I'm a very big proponent on uh, psychologists, uh, mental health professors, support groups. Uh, I'm a big inspirational post nut if you check out my Facebook. And uh, I just want people to be as well and healthy as possible, no matter the, the, the ongoing circumstances, the ongoing life process or, or whatever is that. But you just have to, and you also have to turn to God. And I'm a very strong believer in God. He's my foremost person. He's the first person I turned to when I found out about my husband and also found out about my dad's death. But uh, that's kind of what my story is. Mm. And so, uh, I'm, mm. I'm just glad I'm here. I, I mm. met Kenny probably last uh, January, and uh, I started telling him my story. And lo and behold, I'm now here in October <laughs> telling it to all of Facebook. But uh, if you know me, I'm very real. I'm very mm. honest. And I just want people to be well and to be healthy and to uh, just deal with life, whatever it comes, and, and to just try to make the best of everything. Yeah, so Jacqueline, so God is love. Jacqueline, could I ask you to remove your glasses so I can see your eyes? Yes. You look so beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I see your beautiful eyes. Thank you. Yeah. So, actually, so Jacqueline and I met. See, this is how God is love, love spreads. <laughs> I was out to eat at Zuccarello's with my friend Don, who's an impressionist. He ended up being on the show as a guest. And Jacqueline was at the next table with her amazing son Jordan and we started sharing and again this is many months ago so I'm sharing I'm like <laughs> she's pure love Jacqueline is pure love I'm like I love you so much I want you to be on the Florida love show and I happened to have the poster on the table so she could see like Florida love show the Florida love show poster mm -hmm. and now Jacqueline's on the show see this is how God spreads love Jacqueline this is so meant to be to love Bruce and John Bruce is her husband and John and to dedicate John as her father and to dedicate the show to them. So what's Thank it you. like, your dad, you're up in Pittsburgh, and Jordan, your son, is four. And your dad, how old was your dad when he passed? Uh, he was about 64 mm -hmm. when he passed. And I had my young son up there. He was, also, he was four years old. We were celebrating our birthday, and my dad was in the hospital. He was in and out of hospital with congestive heart failure and the like. And we went and visited him and he didn't look too good. And that night I went to sleep and of course I always pray. I pray in the morning, I pray at night, I pray during the day. We definitely pray during the meals. But uh, I just had a feeling and God said we were supposed to leave like the next day. And God told me, he said, why don't you just wait and see what happens? And lo and behold, a couple days later, my dad, he was actually supposed to go into hospice, and we were addressing it with the family, uh, my brother and my sister and my mom. And uh, he, uh, my dad was also an attorney, and that was like a big thing because he was so integral in my life. I would always share cases with him and, and, and things that occurred, and just for strength. And, uh, and he's kind of the one also that got me into the elder law, probate, and guardianship because of the fact that he had me research an air, a, a trust issue. And I, I started really liking it and uh, that, that started. But he was watching court TV. Uh, only my dad would be watching court TV. But uh, we uh, went downstairs uh, to get a drink. We were with uh, my sister and then her two younger girls and they, they let us into the hospital room. And while we were gone, he ended up passing away. And uh, we were all upset thinking that we kind of failed him at the, at the end. But we had already given last rites and everything, and we had been talking and stuff. And then I always am the proponent that God always protects you. And I knew that even though we weren't there, God called them because only God calls when it's time for us to go. We have no stake in the action. And... Uh, 
It just, he went at that time, and it's probably to protect our, to protect us, and especially to protect my sister, and then, uh, you know, the younger, younger kids that were there, and uh, he passed, and then we had a, uh, a funeral for him, and it was in our old family church, and uh, while they were wheeling the, uh, it was a formal funeral, and while they were wheeling the casket down, my young son, Jordan, four, ran up and started helping people with taking the casket down, and of course, I broke down, but then I had to get myself reserved and, and to follow through, but it's just my son, even at the age of four, kind of knew what he had to do. He's like always stepping up. But then um, we went back to uh, Florida and uh, he, uh, you know, next thing you know, it was uh, a family night on Saturday and uh, we were supposed to go out to dinner and my husband had been working uh, up in uh, uh, near Lantana, up uh, past Del Rey, uh, in uh, Palm Beach County, and so he decided to go off with his friend in uh, his boat. It, it, it was actually the friend's boat. He was driving it, and he had also been uh, uh, drinking alcohol, which boats and alcohol, and I'm a very big, strong proponent that you don't mix any type of transportation with alcohol. And unfortunately, uh, that night he was in a boating accident and uh, he passed away. And so as soon as that happened, I, I had to turn into mother mode, protective mode, especially with a four-year-old child. And I waited until my mom came down because I wanted to make sure everybody was there because I had no idea how I was going to act. And so I... Uh, I went to uh, a psychologist that was very good. It was for his age level. Uh, it's St. Anthony's. They have an incredible staff because my son was already in pre-K at that school. And that school is, is a saving, saving uh, existence or a saving uh, thing in our life, as well as his eventual, my son's eventual school of uh, Cardinal Gibbons. And I'm just a very strong proponent of God. God is always there. God is there in the goodness and the badness. So I uh, ended up uh, telling my son about his dad, and it was probably the worst thing I've ever had. It was the worst thing I had ever do in life. But uh, I had uh, uh, friends across the street. They were the neighbors, and one of the guys was a therapist. So. When you lose uh, somebody, you can't, you have to be as strong of a parent as possible for a child. He was only four, and I, you know, and he wasn't able to really verbalize everything, what was going on, how he felt, and everything. But uh, I would, uh, somebody would watch him, and then while he was being watched, I would basically walk the streets of, uh, of my neighborhood with my therapist and just vent and, and just talk and just try to get everything out as much as possible. And uh, slowly, you get stronger. You, uh, I took a little bit of time off. I, at the time, I was an attorney with Department of Children and Families, and I had been, I had always dealt with people that had special needs, or the elderly, or the disabled, uh, and also with uh, with children that are uh, in foster care or in need of ser protective services and a lot. So I've always dealt with a lot of vulnerable people. But at that point in time, I was vulnerable. But uh, when you become vulnerable, you go to church, you go to God, and uh, you find your support system. My mom stayed with me for a long time, and what was really sad is we were both kind of getting strength of each other because we were both widows within three months of apart, and you never, ever... I can't believe it was the same year. Yeah, it was, well, it was 2000, yeah, it was the, in oh, December. Within three and months. Then, of within three months. And then, and my husband also passed away the day before my sister's twin's birthday. So I, you know, and I, I, I thanked God that it wasn't on their birthday because I said that would have been really, really uh, horrendous to have to remember every year. But you just, you keep going. Uh, I've been an, a single parent for a long time. Uh, I call myself Miss Independent, but I always make sure that my son and knows his grandfather, you know, and, and, my, and my dad was uh, a helicopter pilot in the Army. He actually was in the service when I was born back when, and I didn't see him for about a year and a half. So I kind of had to give up 
my dad in order for him to serve for this country. So I'm a very big proponent on the protection and love of, of the country. And uh, my son is, is, I've put him in a lot of, a lot of military stuff to be regimented to also make sure that he, he knew, you know, his, his grandfather's uh, life. He also knew his, his dad, uh, his dad, good and bad, because you had to, when you have issues and families such as addictions, you have to make sure your children fully know what, what they're, they're composed of by way of hereditary and everything, and also that they uh, don't go into the same level as, as what was done. And just for me, knowing all the background of psychology, and the mental health, and the practice of law, I had to make sure that my son keeps being protected. Yeah. And uh, so, Jack, so Jacqueline, mm -hmm. God is love, and love has, God's love has kept you going through this tragic, these tragic events that you went through. And so, Sharon prepared a song to sing to you, <laughs> to love you. And to love you oh, and you. love it's Bruce so oh, no. and love John. <laughs> My song. I just want to say, Kenny, that um, I haven't sang this song since I was like 16 when my cousin was first learning how to play guitar. And he's like, you got to sing this, you know. And um, I'm so excited to, to sing. You can let it go. That's a big, it's a big intro. Um, you know, um, I haven't really practiced it, so we're going to get through this it's one together. <laughs> um, but Stairway to Heaven is really a classic, and it's just so incredibly beautiful. And this is for you. Thanks. For I your father, it. for your husband, and for your beautiful son, mm -hmm. who's a testament to those two men that are in your life Definitely. that you created. <laughs> There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold And she's buying a stairway to heaven When she gets there she knows if the stores are all closed With a word she can get what she came for And she's buying a stairway to heaven There's a sign on the wall But she wants to be sure Cause you know sometimes words have two meanings In a tree by the brook There's a songbird who sings Sometimes all of our thoughts are misgiven Ooh, it makes me wonder Ring of smoke through the trees And the voices of those who stand looking Ooh, it makes me wonder It's whispered that soon If we all call the tune Then the piper will lead us to reason And a new day 
day will dawn for those who stand long and the forest will echo with laughter. In your hedge grow, don't be alarmed. It's just a spring clean for the May Queen. There are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. <laughs> and it makes me wonder. This is where we need that guitarist. <laughs> That's right. That's coming. That's right. <laughs> Your head is humming and it won't go in case you don't know. The piper's calling you to join him. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know? Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Right now, not before. Oh. Here's the guitar solo. Yeah. <laughs> and I like guitar. We have Rose's guitar. I know. Air guitar. Air guitar. That's right. Even Slick is getting into the groove of the of the air guitar. <laughs> so your father's name was John. John, can you hear us, John? Yeah. And this is definitely Bruce. He likes the rock and roll idea. Bruce. <laughs> was he like, cool like Bruce Willis? Yeah, he was. And he's uh, he was very quiet, but he he loved it. That was another thing Did you ever get to go to like a Led Zeppelin concert? Ah, uh, recently I went to different ones. Back then, uh, a couple of years ago, she's a fan. She's a fan. Mm -hmm. Music probably every weekend. It's just a special time with this song that you want. I do hope that the speakers don't go out. Our shadows taller than our soul. There walks a lady we all know Who shines white light and wants to show How everything still turns to gold And if you listen very hard The tune will come to you at last <laughs> When all are one and one is all To be a rock and not to roll. I like that. <laughs> Rock and not roll. <laughs> you know, God says, you can do more than, than you can handle. He thinks I'm badass. He <laughs> <You> must. <laughs> Completely. And she's buying a stairway. To heaven. Here's to you, Bruce and Dawn. I love you. That's so right. we are all like rocking out here, <laughs> I know. drumming and you know with the classic and uh, so um, Jacqueline, I want to play the slideshow to show everybody your beautiful dad and son and husband. So please play the slideshow. You can see it over here. Thanks. Thanks, Kenny.
beautiful. Yeah. So Thank Jacqueline, you, Kenny. Beautiful. so beautiful. So Jacqueline, what's it like to see those memories in that slideshow? It's, it's to be honest with you, I had not seen those pictures in 19 years, and I had to go through this week to get them, and so many memories came back because I'm just, I don't know, I, I didn't, I guess it was painful in a way, and I didn't want to accept a lot of stuff, so I just kind of go with the flow and just keep going towards everything, but it was very, very therapeutic this week to see the pictures and to know where I've come that I'm strong and thank God I had a strong dad and thank God I had the love of my husband that is now in my son you know that's uh it's like the older he gets the more I remember he reminds you of your husband yeah he does so. well there's a piece of him in there the... I always said he left me his heart <laughs> that's the best part that's, that's why right. I always tell my son thank God guard your heart guard your heart because dad's in there and you know he wants you to do well he wants you to have a happy healthy life and you just gotta you gotta you gotta be strong and he, he's a strong kid you know and he's in the military no? he's well he did civil air patrol and you know i had him do a lot of uh, military stuff with a lot of very good mentors because when you have a kid that's growing up without a dad you really got to look towards the strong mentors and he had that mm -hmm. in his catholic schools he had that in in the church he had that in all the sports things i mean he's been doing sports mm -hmm. since the age of four in fact it, it when he was four i, I started as a soccer coach wow. which was the funniest i said if, I, if you're if i'm going to be out there helping these kids you got to be out there too so he always had to finish every uh, every team but uh it's just it's strength of will mm -hmm. and support and love i mean love is is the golden thing love of god and love of your family and you just you never forget you never forget the memories you're going to have good memories you're going to have bad memories but you have good and bad and everything that's that's just the process of life but you never forget them and you make sure your children honor and honor anybody who's passed and that they they learn from them and they gather strength and they do well so, Jacqueline, I love you so much. And, I love uh, you, too. Can you please take off your glasses again? Because yeah. I want to see your beautiful eyes again. <laughs> I'm so again. used to glasses. Yeah, I know. Yeah, your eyes are so beautiful, and the Thanks. emotion is just, I'm so moved to tears. So, Sharon prepared a song to sing you to end the show and just to love you and John Aww. and Bruce. <laughs> We're buddies now. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, you are. So to honor their memories. Oh no, I know this song. This is mm -hmm. a really beautiful song. Yeah. I don't know if you you know that um, I was in the Israeli army, mm -hmm. and I think it's so great because what you sent him to learn, you don't learn anywhere else like in the army. You have to be strong in the country and your personal will. That's right. And a leader. You know? A survivor. Yeah. <laughs> in this crazy world. I know. <laughs>
So Jacqueline, I love you so much. I love you too. Thanks yeah. for the strength. Thanks for letting me give my story. And hopefully I'll help somebody out there to just know that things do get better. They really do. It takes time. It takes effort, but you can do it. And a lot of prayer too. You got you to have God in there. Yeah, so I love you so much, so much, so much, Jacqueline. And I love Bruce and, you know, I love everybody. And I love Jordan and... The whole family, we're sending all our love here to Thank everybody. You. Everybody. And Shab, beautiful. Love you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, how was Stairway to Heaven, Jacqueline? It was very pretty. I was mm -hmm. told, told Kenny the story is uh, certain times where I'm doing something and I'll think of my husband. And recently I had to go into a Mexican restaurant and I hadn't been there in 19 years because that was like our restaurant. Well, they had a grand opening and we wanted to try it. So I went in and I was thinking about him the whole time. And when I got in my car, lo and behold, the song Highway to Heaven wow. was on there, or Stairway to Heaven was on there. And I go, okay, honey, we're no going to be okay. you know, because <laughs> certain things will trigger me. I, I mean, I still cry on certain things. Of course. But uh, that's life. It's <laughs> It's a process, but yeah. yeah but so this was, and you know what's really weird is the one song that you just sang. You know, the memory song is when I was younger. My dad was a very big proponent on school, and I had to go all over Pittsburgh and take pictures, pictures of life, people, and everything. And that, and I had to put it into a slideshow with music, and that was one of the songs that I Amazing. used. And I said, "Man, this is this is just everything." You know, it's it's just. Everything will trigger. Everything's in there, but you know, it's you got to protect the memories. You got to protect the love. Right. You really do. Yeah. So this is how God spreads love. So love you, love you, love you. Love you, love you. Really too. Really love you, Thank love you, you, love you. And there's so much love coming in on Facebook for you. I just want you to know, Jacqueline. So many people are saying and sending their love to you. Oh, so thanks. I want to thank all of you lovers for watching the Florida Love Show today. And as I always end every show, who can you give a rose to? I love you. You've been listening to the Florida Love Show, where we've been spreading love in the Florida community. For more information, please contact me, Kenny Love, at 917-699-1995 or ken at florida-love.com or on our website, florida-love.com. See you next week, 3 p.m. Friday for the Friday Love Hour. Keep spreading love in your life. And have a loving week. Love you all.